Hey, what's going on guys, it's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video and we're gonna talk about validation. So it's very important to validate all data that's being sent to your server because if you don't validate your request bodies, it opens up your application to so many vulnerabilities. It can open up your database to holding a bunch of unnecessary data. So for example, if you expect a user to enter in an email address and if you don't validate that at all, then they can pass in a non-valid email address and it's going to be living inside your database and you probably don't want that. Another very important thing to understand is you should always validate both client side as well as server side. The reason why is because the client itself can be any client. Okay, it can be the HTML form that you're accessing on the web browser or some website on some website. It can be Postman. It can be Perl, the command that you use on Bash to make requests. It can be Invoke REST method, which is part of PowerShell. It can be any. If you don't validate server side, then anyone can just send anything to your application, and you probably don't want that. So it's very important to always validate the server side and you can also validate client side as well so if someone doesn't enter in the correct email address then you won't make that http request validation is as simple as just checking to see if fields match a certain condition so if let's say for example we wanted to make sure that the user is sending a username that has a minimum length of five characters. That's a very basic example of validation. But of course, it can become very complex depending on what it is that you want to check for. So luckily, there's actually a library called Express Validator, and we can install Express Validator, which provides a bunch of middleware functions that we can use to validate the data that is being sent to our server. So we're going to install Express validator so that's npm i express hyphen validator cool so we have express validator so i'm just run my app again okay so what we're going to do is we're going to validate all of the data that is going to be sent to our post endpoint for slash users right over here so this was implemented in the previous video where we first connected to our database so we're going to validate it right before we actually save the data to the database. So to actually use Express Validator, all we need to do is we just need to import it. So const check validation results. So we're going to import these functions from Express Validator. Okay. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go inside this router.post function call, and we're gonna pass in a middleware function, okay? So if you don't know what middleware is, I suggest you go ahead and watch my video on Express Middlewares. I explain what they are and how to actually use them. But essentially, middleware is just a simple function that has three parameters. And the important ones are the request and response object, and basically, it allows the middleware to do some checks, modify the request object, modify certain things, and it makes sure. And if everything goes well, then it's going to invoke the next middleware function. So the middleware function that we're going to invoke is check. So we're going to call it check. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that username is present. So if we actually, let me put a comment there. So right after the method call for check, I can actually use the dot operator. And we can see that we have a bunch of different functions that we can use to validate the body parameter for username. Okay, so username is the actual parameter that's inside the request body. And so we're going to make sure that username is, let's see, there's a whole bunch of different things that we can check. So I highly suggest you guys look through it and play around with it. But we can make sure that, let's just say username is not empty. So we can invoke it with parentheses. And let's also make sure that password is not empty as well. So let me actually wrap this inside an array because we can also have an array of middleware functions as well. So check password is not empty. Okay, so now we have both of our middleware functions. And what we're gonna do is inside the request handler, we're gonna go ahead and declare a variable called errors. And we're going to call the validation results function that we imported up here. And again, this is just straight from the documentation. So I'm just showing you guys how to actually use it. So validation result is going to take in the request object because what happens is these middleware functions will attach the errors to the request object. And we just need to check to see if errors is not empty. Okay, so if it's not empty, 
that means that there are errors. So let me actually console log errors just to show you guys what it looks like before we do anything else. Okay, it's always good to test everything out. So let's go ahead and make a post request. And let's just give username and password empty values. So, whoops. Okay, so our server is running. So you can see it's sending the request and you can see that right over here, result, okay? You can see that we have errors and the array of errors is not empty, right? It says invalid value, param, username, location, body. Same thing for message, same thing for password. Now, if we were to pass an actual values, you can see that right over here, result, the errors array is empty. So that's what this check is gonna do. We're checking to see if errors is actually empty. Okay, so if errors is empty, that means there were no errors, the validation succeeded. However, if there are errors, then we're just gonna simply return We'll just send the status of let's say 400 and we can just send the errors like this. Okay, and this is literally the same example that's from the documentation. So in case you guys want to check this out, they have a bunch of different examples and they show you how to use it. So yeah, so if this is the case, then we're going to send a message. And if it's not, then we're just going to continue with the rest of the program. So it's going to get the username and password. It's going to save it to a database. So my database might have some data over here. Okay, it does. Good. So let's go ahead and let's make a post request. So let's send empty values. And you're going to see that it says errors. Okay, invalid value password. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't want to send this to the client. You would probably want to just send a custom message saying something like, can I have empty username or password? Okay, so let's just send Anson1 and password123. So there we go, successfully created the record. So if I go ahead into my database and query our table, you can see our record is in the database. And you can also have custom messages, custom error messages. So using the with message method, we can just say username cannot be empty. And then for password, Password cannot be empty. And now if I go into Postman and let's just send this, you can see that the error says username cannot be empty. And if I uncheck or not uncheck, if I uh, leave password as empty, we're gonna have two errors. And we can also add additional checks as well. We can kind of like chain our validation functions. So let's just say for example, is length. We can just say minimum of five characters with message username must be at least five characters. So what this is going to do is it's going to check to see if the username is a minimum of five characters long. So let's go ahead and make a post request. So see how it says username must be at least five characters. Okay, if I have username empty, it's gonna say username cannot be empty. Username must be at least five characters. So that's pretty cool. So if I did one, you can see that we don't have any errors at all. And that record should be created in our database, just like that. And again, we can do the same thing with password as well. So there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with Express Validator. So I highly suggest you guys check it out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video gave you guys an understanding of how you can validate your fields because obviously you don't want to save every single thing to the database. And there are also more specific checks that we need to do, such as making sure that we're not creating duplicate records in our database. Because right now, if I wanted to, I can create a user with the same username as Anson. And in a real application, you would not want that. Okay, the username should be unique. To solve that though, what you could do is you could just create your table and have username be a primary key. That would make things a lot easier. So if you did, however, try to add a duplicate to the database, it would throw an error. That'd be the safest thing to do. But you could just technically just query the database and then insert and then check to see if that record exists. And if it doesn't, then you can add it. But if it does, you won't add it. So yeah, this was just a simple example of how to validate your data. So hopefully this video made sense and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.